First question, this is taken from the 2006 paper involving probability. Now, three dice are thrown, one after the other. Calculate the probability of that. Okay, what I'm going to do is to draw a probability tree diagram. So we've got um, the first dice, we have dice one then. Um, and what I'm going to do is to draw the branches of the probability tree diagram. Now, there are six numbers on the dice. We can either have the number one, the number two, the number three, the number four, the number five, and the number six. So the probability of getting a one is 1 out of 6. We normally write the probabilities on the branches like so. Probability of getting a 2, 6 and so on and so forth. So this is the first set of branches on the probability tree diagram. But having rolled the first dice, we can also roll the second dice. And there will also be 6 branches for each of the 6 numbers. Just fit them in. So we've got um, probability of getting a 1, probability of getting a 2, exactly the same as the first set of branches, except that they follow on from that first set. Again, we've got a number, we've got a sixth here, because throwing a 1 or a 2 or a 3, etc., on the second dice is entirely independent of the result we got for the second for the first dice so one sixth now you'll notice that if I add all these numbers so there's a sixth plus a sixth plus a sixth these numbers here if I add them all together give me the value one so the probability probability of getting a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six is a one now, how do we use these? Well, we add down the branches, as I've just shown. We add down the branches like so, but when it comes to moving in this direction, which is to say from one set of branches to another, we always multiply now, I don't have space to fit in the third set of branches, or even to finish drawing in a complete set of branches for the second dice. So this is dice one here. And this is dice two. But we don't need any more information. We can work out exactly what we want from what we have at the moment. So let's answer question one. What we want to do is to, to get, find the probability that all three dice give a six. So here it is down here. The probability of getting a six of the first dice is one six. Then we move on to the second set of branches. The probability of getting a six in the second dice is 1 out of 6 and the probability of getting a 6 in the third dice is also 1 out of 6 but we multiply we multiply moving from left to right okay so the final probability then is 1 over 216 second question probability that of all three dice giving the same number. Now we've just seen the probability of all three dice giving as a six is one out of 216. The probability of all three dice giving a five will be the same, one out of 216. And I think, I think you can see that the probability of all three numbers being the same is simply six lots of 1 over 216, which is 1 over 36.
The third question is to find out, asking us to find the probability of dice 3 giving us a 6 only. So what we have to think about then is dice 1. So what's the probability of getting a 1 to a 5? That would be 5 out of 6. We can't consider the 6 in a positive sense, which is to say we're not interested in getting a 6. So the probability of getting a 1 to a 5, rolling dice 1, is 5 out of 6. Dice 2 is going to be exactly the same. They can get any of the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, so the probability of any one of those appearing is 5 out of 6. And the third dice, well, there's only one 6 on the third dice, the probability of getting that is 1 out of 6. Again, we're moving along the branches of the tree diagram, so we're going to multiply. 5 times 5 is 25, and that gives us 216 on the bottom. And that is how we do probability tree diagrams. As a, an extra, an extra slide, a footnote if you will, um, I've, you're looking now at the solutions provided by someone else and it's interesting to note the notation used. So we know that P stands for probability. 666 means the first dice has a 6, the second dice has a 6 and the third dice has a 6. Similarly for question to part 2, what we have here, this notation, 6 dash, means probability of getting a number other than a 6. So you might want to include that in your own solutions. This is a second example, and this one is taken from paper 2007. Two dice are thrown. What is the probability that their numbers add up to 6? and then to 11. So, um, possibles, the number 6 then. So the probability that we have a 1 on the first dice, and employing the notation that I've just talked about, we would have a 5 on the second dice. So for the first dice, the probability of getting a 1 is a 6. The second dice, the probability of getting a 5 is a 6. So remember, we're multiplying along the branches, and that would be 1 out of 36. We just have to think about the number of possible combinations. And that would be 2, 4. That will also be a 1 over 36. We could have a 3 in the first dice, and a 3 in the second dice, 1 over 36. Um, and we could, so that gives us three possibilities, but we could also reverse the order, which is to say we could have a 5 on the first dice and a 1, and then a 4 and a 2. That's 1 out of 36, and 1 out of 36. So the probability then of getting a 6 and two rolls of the dice, that's to say a total of 6 with two rolls of the dice, would be... Um, We're going to add these all together, so that will give 5 out of 36. Second part of the question, the probability of getting an 11, well that should be a bit straightforward. We could have a 5 first, then a 6, so that's, um, well, that's, one, over well, that's 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, which is 1 over 36. And then we could have a probability of getting a 6 first and then a 5, so that's 1 over 36. So the probability then of would be 2 over 36, which simplifies to 1 over 18. This last example is from 2008. A die is biased so that the numbers 5 and 6 are obtained 3 times as often as 2, 3 and 4 and the number 1 is never obtained. To calculate the probability that a 2 is thrown, 2 consecutive throws give a total greater than or equal to 10. Now this one requires a bit of thought because it's really a, it's a bit tricky. Um, so let's consider, let me just draw the tree diagram again. I thought I'd finished with that. Obviously not. Oh. Now, one, two, three, four, five, 
six. Well, the probability of getting a one is zero. Now, remember that when we add down the branches, we must get the total probability of one, which is to say the probability of getting a two or a three or a four or a five or a six has to be one. So how are we going to do this? Um, the probability of getting, let's just say the probability of getting a 2 is a. Well, the numbers 2, 3 and 4 have the same probability. Lo and behold, though, um, the probability of getting a 5 and a 6 is 3 times that. So we can then form an equation. If we add down the branches, we've got 9a equals 1. So a equals 1 over 9, which is to say the probability of getting a 1, sorry, the pro well, we know that the probability of getting a 1 is 0, but the probability of getting a 2, 3 or 4 is 1 over 9, and that the probability of getting a 5 and a 6, or, or a 6, is 3 over 9. Now, let's see if we can answer part 1. What's the probability that a 2 is thrown? Well, we've seen that. The probability of getting a 2 is 1 over 9. Two consecutive throws give a total greater than or equal to 10. Part two, the probability of getting a sum greater than or equal to 10. Well, what could we have? We've got first dice, we could have um, four on the first dice, six on the second. Um, we could have five and five. Five on the first, five on the second, that would give us ten. We could have five on the first, six on the second, and we could then have six on the first, four on the second. We've already got the probability of getting five and five, and then six on the first, and four. And we cannot weave out the last one, which is to say the probability of getting a six followed by a six. So what have we got here? Well, it's 1 over 9 times 3 over 9. That gives us 1 over 27. Um, 3 over 9 times 3 over 9. That's 1 over 9. So again... That's going to be 3 over 9 times 1 over 9, which is 1 over 27. This one here is 6 and 5, that's going to be another 1 over 9, and 6 and 6 is 1 over 9 as well. So the probability then of getting a total which is greater than or equal to 10 is, what do we have? We've got 1 over 9 times 4, and 2 lots of 1 over 27. So uh, 1 over 9 is 3 over 27. 3 times 4 is 12. So that's 12 over 27 plus 2 over 27. And that equals 14 over 27. That was the trickiest, I think, of the three examples. A very interesting one.